it comes to horror movies today, the film industry has almost run out of fresh ideas, so they have to remake every great horror film in existence. These remakes are usually uninspired, pathetic pieces of garbage made to bank on the original's names and appeal to a young crowd that probably never even seen the originals. But there are exceptions, and that's why I'm picking out the remakes I think aren't that bad. It's Cinemassacre's Top 10 Horror Remakes. Now bear with me for a moment, I need to set some criteria. What qualifies as a remake? Well I say any movie that uses an earlier movie as its source material is a remake, whether it makes significant changes or is a shot for shot copy like the remake of Psycho. If it's based on a book or other source material that's already been made into a movie before, that still counts. Evil Dead 2 is a strange example where the first 10 minutes is actually a remake of the first film. That doesn't count, that's a part remake, part sequel. Another thing to consider is that many of the old classics are actually remakes themselves. Dracula, Frankenstein, and Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde all came out in 1931, a monumental year for the genre. These films are considered the originals of their kind, but all the stories were first adapted to the screen during the silent era, and some of them had even more remakes during the black and white period, like Jekyll and Hyde and The Hunchback of Notre Dame, which were excellent. That makes it hard not to fill the whole list with classics, so I need to draw a line somewhere. Let's say it must have sound and it must be in color, that way it represents the full evolution of film. And one last thing, for it to make the list, it doesn't have to be as good as the original, just good in itself. Let's get started. Number 10. Halloween. You may say I'm scraping the bottom of the toilet here. This movie gets mixed opinions. It's not as subtle and effective as the original, but it's much better than many of the sequels. After Michael Myers had been turned to a slapstick clown at the mercy of Jamie Lee Curtis in H2O, and then beaten silly by Busta Rhymes in Halloween Resurrection, it was time for him to be re-established as the king of the slasher villains. Director Rob Zombie paid tribute to the original a lot and didn't offer a whole lot new, but he at least made Michael Myers a threatening and brutal force again. Yes, I do think there are many flaws with this movie, but overall, Zombie gives it a unique vision, it got people talking, and it deserves a number 10 spot. Number 9. The Grudge. It is kind of sad when Japanese horror movies get remade with American actors for the sole purpose of getting Americans to watch them, though The Grudge has the same director as the original. Many would say The Ring is the better remake, but The Ring doesn't get under my skin the same way as The Grudge. I watch horror movies all the time, alone, at any time of night. They usually never bother me. But this one actually scared me senseless. That creepy little boy, the contortionist girl coming down the steps. My God. Yes, it's PG-13. So what? It doesn't need to have gore, cursing, and nudity. It just needs to be scary. Number 8. Night of the Living Dead. Remaking the world's most important zombie classic was unnecessary, sure, but as its own film, it's pretty solid. Tom Savini was in Dawn of the Dead and did the special effects for both Dawn of the Dead and Day of the Dead. For the remake, he's been promoted to director. He gives it a nice touch for a new decade, amplifying the gore and explores the characters in new ways. In the original, Barbara was always crying, screaming, and fainting, but now she's a stronger woman and not so badly stereotyped. There is no reason to remake it, but for any zombie lover, it's still worth seeing. They're coming to get you, Barbara. Number seven, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. People seem to hate this remake. I've never heard anyone say anything good about it. I smell bullshit. But they're all missing one thing. R. <laughs> Lee Ermey. Baby, get out of the bank! He plays a psychotic sheriff who really makes you feel uncomfortable. She ain't gonna bite you. She's dead her in the goddamn doornail. Get a hold of her and pick her up. There's no limit to how sick this guy can be. And then what she do? We're talking about the same actor who played the sergeant in Full Metal Jacket. He does an amazing job here, one of the most underrated horror performances in the past decade. And his character isn't from the original, it's fresh and new. 
I think the great thing about this remake is that it doesn't try to copy the original. It has a different family of psychopaths, and the slick cinematography sets it apart from the gritty documentary look of the first one. It's a different film. If they would have dropped the Leatherface character and called it something different, it wouldn't have been so shunned. But it wouldn't have made as much money, and that's the problem. Number 6. The Blob when you have something like a mass of space slime that crawls around and devours people, you have a lot of potential for special effects. So I think it was a good idea to show off a modern take on the blob, just to see more things that this unique monster could do. The original was the better movie, because the characters were lovable, and there was some genuine suspense. You never needed to see the blob that often. If you're watching the remake, you need to put yourself in a different state of mind. This one is all about seeing the blob and the crafty special effects. If it was done any later, there is no doubt the blob would be 100% computer generated. This was still in a time when stop motion and animatronics were being used. So if anything, this movie stands as a testament to this dying art. The original blob was a charming and fun little time capsule of a movie that represented the 50s. In the same way, the new one represented the 80s. Number 5. Dawn of the Dead. When I first heard that they were remaking the most sacred zombie sequel of all time, I lost all hope in humanity. Then I saw the movie, and it was pretty good. The basic concept of the first one is the same, but they took the idea and ran with it. Literally, running zombies? Why not? It's a different movie. It's full of action, suspense, gore, and drama. All the ingredients of a great zombie film. This is another instance when I wish they would have given it a new title, rather than giving it the baggage of being a remake. Number 4. The Fly David Cronenberg upped the ante on the gore in this shocking remake of the 1958 classic about the dangers of scientific discovery. The original movie unfolded like a mystery. You never saw the fly until the very end. But here, there's nothing subtle. It goes straight for the jugular with the gross-out factor on max. The special effects are monumentally awesome, which steal the show. But it's backed up by a good script and great acting by Jeff Goldblum and Gina Davis. The scientific rules are changed. Here, we get to see Goldblum gradually become the fly, which was an excellent idea. Everything about you is changing. Oh no, what's happening to me? Am I dying? This is a remake that seems to be universally acknowledged for its greatness. It's gotten the praise it deserves. Nowadays, more people seem to have watched the remake than the original. This is a case where the tables are turned. People who haven't even seen the original think that it's campy, probably mistaking it for the sequel, Return of the Fly, and don't even realize that the original was a well-written and thought-provoking movie, not to be overlooked. Number 3. House of Wax no, I'm not talking about the 2005 remake, but the 1953 remake. Yes, it's hard to believe that such a classic like this was a remake of an earlier film, Mystery of the Wax Museum, 1933, which was also pretty good. House of Wax follows the same plot as the original, but gives it a new dimension. In fact, three dimensions. It was one of the first 3D movies. Funny how that's come back in style. Vincent Price is fascinating as the tormented artist who goes on a killing spree, dipping people in wax and displaying them in his wax museum. It's a tale of revenge, and in some ways, it's kind of like a comic book. It's colorful, creepy, and all around a great A horror film. Number 2. The Thing I think anyone's top remake list would include John Carpenter's vile and gruesome take on the 1951 Howard Hawks classic. The original, titled The Thing From Another World, was always a favorite of Carpenter's, so when he made his own version, he took special care not to copy it. In fact, it sticks closer to the original story, called Who Goes There. It's an extreme bloody mess with one of the most interesting alien monsters of all time, which consumes and takes on the physical likeness of its victims. The special effects are a milestone in filmmaking achievement and are totally revolting. You gotta be fucking kidding. The effects may be a little too overwhelming for the film's own good, but the feeling of paranoia and nervous tension stays strong throughout. Also, there's Kurt Russell. He's badass as always. Yeah, fuck you too! Both versions of the thing are completely different from one another. They're polar opposites. Quite literally, the original takes place in the Arctic, and the remake takes place in the Antarctic. 
The original will always be one of the greatest science fiction chillers of all time, and the remake will always be a staple of 80s horror cinema and a showcase of groundbreaking special effects. And now for the number one horror remake. Bang! Hammer! That's right, the Hammer films, all of them. In the late 50s and early 60s, Hammer remade all the Golden Age classics for the first time in color with blood, tits, and cinematic elegance. These movies set the standard for how remakes should be done. So yes, I'm putting a whole studio's catalog of films as the number one spot. Think that doesn't count? Well, bang, Hammer. Even if I put them all in their own individual spots, then the top three spots would be Curse of Frankenstein, Horror of Dracula, and The Mummy. And those are the ones I'm talking about. All with the teaming of legendary horror icons Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing. They made Dr. Frankenstein more ruthless, killing people for his own experiments. They went into more grisly details about the crude nature of his scientific methods and showed his own mental deterioration. Horror of Dracula brought the Count's evilness to a new level, now with fangs and now more of a sexual predator. It gave Van Helsing more hero power as a fearless vampire hunter who stops at nothing. The Mummy took the best elements of previous Mummy films and put them all together into one excellent package. The opposing forces are so brilliantly portrayed. On one hand, the archaeologists who want to preserve history, and on the other, the Egyptian priests who want to keep their ancient family treasures sacred and untouched. And in the middle of it all, a vengeful mummy hell-bent on killing all who desecrated the tomb of his beloved princess. It's great stuff. The stellar period settings, chilling atmosphere, gothic scenery, anything Hammer has got to be number one. Anything you say otherwise, bang, Hammer! These do such great justice to the classics that they're classics in their own right. It's Hammer time. When it comes to best horror remakes, you can't touch this. Now my revenge is complete.